Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We are here to debate the rule providing for consideration of H.R. 9495 and H.R. 1449. The rule provides for H.R. 1449 to be considered under a structured rule. One hour of debate equally divided and controlled by the chair and the ranking minority member of the Committee on Natural Resources or their designees. The rule further provides for H.R. 9495 to be considered under a closed rule. One hour of debate each, equally divided and controlled by the chair and ranking minority member of the Committee on Ways and Means or their designees. The rule provides for a motion to recommit for each bill. We have had our eyes opened to a lot in the wake of last year's horrifying October 7th attack in Israel. We have been reminded of how much anti-Semitism still somehow exists in our own country. And as we saw American citizens taken hostages by some by Hamas. We were also sadly reminded that many Americans who have been taken hostage or illegally detained across the world, H.R. 9495, the Stop Terror Financing and Tax Penalties on American Hostages Act, is twofold. First, it directs the IRS to disregard the time during which a person being held hostage for purposes of when that person filed their tax returns, paid income taxes, or filed a claim. This will also be true for their spouses. This is a small thing, given the circumstances that they have endured, but an obvious one. So obvious that it sounds silly to say it out loud that someone should, have, should not have to worry about missing the deadline to file their taxes because they were being held hostage. This bill also addresses abuses within the nonprofit sector that support terrorism by prohibiting these organizations from maintaining their tax-exempt status if they are found to have provided material support or resources to a terrorist or terrorist-supported organiz supporting organization. After October 7th and the anti-Semitism that spread rapidly across campuses, the House Ways and Means Committee began investigating tax-exempt organizations to make sure they were not making contributions that would benefit terrorists. It seems fairly obvious that if your organization is supporting terrorist activity in any way, shape, or form, you should at a minimum lose your tax-exempt status. This bill is so sensible, it should have been able to pass under suspension. And yet, somehow, the Democrats still do not understand the wish of the American people. Americans want to protect their citizens and not support terrorism. It is that simple. I cannot understand how many of my colleagues voted against this bill last week, but I will be proud to vote for it again. This rule also provides consideration for H.R. 1499, the committing leases for Energy Access Now, or the CLEAN Act, which will provide certainty for U.S. geothermal energy projects. Right now, the Department of the Interior is required to hold a competitive lease sale every two years. However, some states have not had a lease sale for much longer than that. Under this legislation, the Secretary of the Interior must hold these sales annually and must respond to the permit applications within 30 days of receipt to let the applicant know if their application is complete. If it is, the Secretary has 30 days to issue a final decision. Geothermal energy is clean and renewable, making it a great way to expand America's energy portfolio and meet our growing demand domestically rather than relying on other nations. I look forward to supporting these two bills, and thank you, Mr. Speaker, I reserve.